Hello guys, welcome back. Now in this session, we are going to learn about build run history URL in Power Automate. So let's jump into the Power Automate portal to do this. So guys, I am inside the Power Automate portal and we are going to look into how to build the run history URL. But prior to that, I want to let you know that what is the reason behind to build the run history URL. And the reason is if you go inside the run history, then you will find that the flow has many run history. This is for the sample purpose. I am showing one of the flow which we have developed recently. But when this flow go inside the production environment, then you will find that many run history information. And it is very difficult to identify that which run history has the error information. If we have multiple failed statuses and the problem is developers don't have access to the production environment in the larger organization so all thing is managed by the operations team so in that scenario run history is very helpful if you are giving the URL of the run history to the operations team they can directly navigate to the actual run history of the flow and identify that what actually the problem is if in case your flow is failing so this is about why we use the run history URL so let's go inside the flow and let's introduce the logic to build the run history so I will come over here click on edit this pencil icon so guys I will go inside the catch block and over here I will build the run history URL because in case of failure this will be very useful so the first step I am going to introduce a compose operation that you already know that so I will write compose here and data operations connector over here and you will see that it is part of the data operations and within that I am going to write over here I will tell that I will give it a name first I will give it extract flow info and within that I am going to specify over here or uh, expression there is something called workflow so workflow is a function which holds the information about flow which it is executing over here so I will click on ok so now once it is being done then I am going to write another formula over here and that is on compose operation itself so I am going to write another compose operation this is compose data operation and over here I am going to write this formula so I will tell that give it a name build run history so I will come over here click on inputs click on expressions so now let's observe the run history URL and accordingly we will build the expression so let me open the same flow in the different tab I will come over here click on duplicate go to my flows and over here I will go inside the run history and let me copy this run history I will click any of the run history which is being recently failed or succeed whatever it doesn't matter I will go inside that and over here I will click this one and copy into the notepad so over here I will paste this one one thing you will see it over here this is going to be the common so what will happen if your flow belongs to any of the region that is the information it is going to be if you are working for Australia region if you are working for America region if you are working for Asia region so your address is going to be like that for example I am working in India and I have set up my flow into Asia region that the reason I am getting this so this is going to be the constant so I will copy this one so I will copy till this slash I will copy this and go back to our power automate portal and over here I will come back in the expression I will write concat and over here within that and I will put a single quotes and within that I will paste the URL for my case it is going to be the same you can keep it inside the SharePoint configuration list also and you can manage this URL as well but for our scenario I am just keeping inside the flow itself once it is being done the next thing I want default and some ID so from where we will get this so this we will get it from the step which we have mentioned over here extract flow info so this has the workflow over here and this workflow has that information about this ID so how I will write it let's look into that so I will go back I will click on expression let me quickly type concat single quotes paste comma and over here I will write I will go to the dynamic value over here I will come dynamic value and I will choose extract flow info I will select this one I will go to end and over here I need to specify it is inside the tags there is something called tags so I will come here I need to grab the tags over here and then I need to specify the environment name so what is the environment name over here so I need to specify that so I will type environment name over here I will show you 
why we are writing all these things so once it is being done then i will show you one more thing let me open the notepad then over here you will find that we are having a value called flows so i am going to write as is so this is just a word over here so i will copy this one and i will go back to our expression and put it there i will come over here and within the quotes i will put the flows now next we have another id so this id we will grab it this is nothing but a name so i will grab this name from the workflow which we have extracted if you remember that we have put the workflow function and that workflow function extract the metadata of the flow and that is what we are extracting now so i will come over here and at the end i will put a comma and then i will go to the dynamic content again click on extract flow info go to the end and over here i want the name so i will write name over here and then again i will put the comma over here now let's look into what we have next we are having runs so grab this one and after that we are having the id so this is nothing but a run id so first let's copy this one and i will come back over here and i will put a quotes over here you will see that and i will put over here runs it is runs and make sure that you are using the slashes over here now we are having run id so how i will grab the run id again i will come back but prior to that i will show you again over here we are having this run id so how i will extract the run id i will show you so again at the end you can come over here and click on dynamic content and select the extract flow info go to the end and over here we need to specify the key and the key is run and i want to extract the name so i will specify name and we are done so let me do one thing copy entire expression and click on ok and go back to the notepad and i will paste it there so now i will paste it over here so this is the formula we have written or say this is the expression we have written to make this url so what we are doing we are telling the in which region it is belonging to that is going to be entirely constant then we are telling that outputs of this one and then over here you will find that we are extracting the environment name which is giving us the id then we are specifying the flows then we are express then we are specifying the name then runs and run name so let me do one thing let me execute this code and let's look into all the values which workflow function has so let's go to the power automate portal to execute it so i will come over here click on save and what i will do as i already mentioned that if i will rerun it again then it will throw an error and that is what i want that because i want to execute the catch block so and once it gets executed then this block gets executed and we will identify or say we will verify that what is the output we are getting for this function so let's click on test over here automatically with the recent use trigger i will select test field and click on test so let's run it and you will see that as usual it is doing the expected thing it is failed now with the same reason which i already mentioned but if you go inside that and if you go to the extract flow info then you will find very interesting information let me copy this one so that we can identify one by one and let's go back to the notepad but prior to that let's look into the url first then we will look into the how we are making that url so i will come back and let's grab this url this is the output we got truly control c let's go back to the notepad and over here i will paste it and now you will see that it has given us whatever we are expecting which is similar to this one only the id is going to be changed because it is different but this you can observe that this is the environment so what is environment in the power automate or power platform thing i will show you so you will see it over here we are having something called environments over here so by default we are into the default environment that you can create a new environment as i am using the dev environment and that is also free environment i can say and it offers only single environment that is default but if you have the proper power platform license then you will get the option to create the environment multiple environment over here so this is what it is referring over there and this is what it is showing over here so this is referred to that environment and you will see that this is similar there is no difference next we are having the flows and if you remember that for this one after flows we have specified give me the name so you will see that it has given me this unique id that is nothing but this name which we are extracting from the help of workflow method which microsoft has given us next we are having runs that is constant itself and last we are having the 
run name that means the execution which we have done just now and which got failed so i want the name of that execution and that is also nothing but a unique id so i extracted that one so now let's grab the workflow function output and let's look into what are the metadata it has so i will come back and over here i will grab this information which is coming from the workflow function so let's go back to the notepad and over here i will paste it then you will find that it has given us these number of information which is in json format so the first information which we are extracting the environment name and you will see it over here this is inside a key called tags and which holds the json value and over here we are having environment name and that is what this value we are extracting now next we are having over here if you will look into that we are having the outputs name so over here you will see that if you go inside this flow then you will find it over here it has this name and if you compare this value with the value which we have built over here that is going to be the similar now next we are having the run over here you will see that we are telling that give me the value of run and within that run we need the name and that is what it is doing it is extracting this run and from run it is extracting this name and what is the value we have over here that is what is returning and with the help of this we are making the run history now what i will do suppose this error happened in the production environment and i log this error and I come to know that uh, okay this error happened and I need to intimate the operations team that we got uh, uh, information that there is error happened and uh, so they will ask that okay can you give me the run history then I will tell that yeah sure because there are many runs happened every day and sometimes it gets failed and to give the exact run history we need to give this URL so i will give this url to the operations engineer and they will use it let's look into that where it is taking us so i will copy this one and i will come over here click a new tab and paste it over here enter then you will find that it has taken us to the same place where we got the error that means our url is working our run history url is working so operations engineer can easily identify what happened and why it has failed and they can intimate it why it is being failed and this is very useful technique whenever we are working in a silo environment where operations teams are working separately development teams are working separately in that situation it is very useful for debugging and guys this is what i wanted to demonstrate you in this session but prior to closing this session so let's wrap it so guys in this session we have seen that how to build the run history url and this is very useful technique whenever we are working with the larger team where production environment is managed by the operations team and you don't have any control over production environment so in that scenario in case of failure you must have to rely upon such technique for debugging now in the next session we will take our program little further and we will build the custom error logging mechanism where we can store the errors inside the sharepoint list along with the build run history url so on this note i am stopping over here see you in the next session till then bye bye take care